and uh, call now on Ranking Member Smith for his opening statement. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Secretary and uh, General Dempsey for being here. And I applaud you uh, for the effort that you've put in over the course of the last year. Uh, this did start quite some time ago with a major strategic review of our military and our national security needs uh, that was, as has been documented, uh, a very holistic, transparent process in which you brought in all of the military leaders and really sat down and thought about what our national security needs are going to be for the next 10 years. The strategy, without question, was where this whole process started. And I applaud you for that. And you've laid out a very clear and coherent strategy. And when it comes to the budget numbers, I think it's important to take a step back and have a little perspective on exactly what they are. The, the defense budget has doubled over the course of the last 10 years. The budget that is put before us, as, as the chairman points out, will be increasing the defense budget every year from this year forward. We, we hear about these cuts. These cuts are from what was projected to be needed to be spent a year or two ago. They are not actual cuts, with the, the sole exception of this year. Yes, after doubling the defense budget over the course of the last 10 years, not even counting the overseas contingency operations money, this one year we go from $530 billion last year to $525, and then it goes up every single year for the next 10. It's part, I guess, of sort of Washington think that when you increase the budget, you can call it a cut. You know, it's a decrease in the increase, perhaps, but it is an increase nonetheless. So we have to keep those numbers in perspective. I think it's also worth pointing out that over the course of the last 10 years, I don't think there's a single person on this committee who would argue that we've done an outstanding job of efficiently and effectively spending those dollars on the defense budget. Anybody who would argue that we can't go back and look at our acquisition and procurement process and do it much better, do it in a way that's actually going to deliver more capable pieces of equipment at less money. And that's what these gentlemen have done. And they've taken a hard look at those last 10 years and figured out how to do it better. Now, I'm not going to be overly critical of those last 10 years. 9-11 happened, and we had to respond. We had to fund the military. And when you have to act that fast, mistakes will be made. And I know the people who were making those decisions back then did their level best in a very difficult time. But to not learn from that experience 10 years later and figure out a way to spend that money, that would be a betrayal of our job and of the job of the people in the Pentagon. So I, I applaud you uh, for doing that. I think we have a budget that did put the strategy first, that puts us in the right direction. And then also I will point out that this is the law. The budget numbers that we projected for the next 10 years and that Secretary Panetta and General Dempsey had to live under were passed by this Congress. Now, I know some members of this committee voted for it and some members didn't, but it's the law of the land passed by the House and the Senate. The $487 billion reduction in the projected increases is the law that these people had to follow and that we passed and gave to them. So as we hear today about various different programs and areas where we think that this budget is cutting too much, it would be most helpful, and I doubt this will happen, but I will ask for it anyway, that if as people are making those criticisms, they point out where they'd like to find the money. Either within the defense budget, you can say, okay, your strategy is all right, um, but you should have spent more money here and less money there. Or if you don't think that's possible within the defense budget, then by all means, let us know what taxes you want to raise to produce more money. Or if you don't want to do that, what other programs, preferably with some specificity, instead of just generally saying we'd like to spend less money on government, that you're going to cut. Otherwise, this is just an exercise in imagining that we have more money than we actually do. Now, these gentlemen didn't have that luxury. They had to put together a budget based on the law that we gave them. And again, I'll emphasize, I think they did a very good job of it. Now, they put out a strategy that understands how the world is changing. The main threats that we're going to face are going to be asymmetric, non-state terrorist threats, um, and then also Iran, North Korea, their missile technology. We need a different sort of military to confront that than the one that fought two major land wars in the last 10 years. This strategy reflects those changes. Just to give one example, the Special Operations Command will keep going up because we know how critical they are to precisely the fight that we face. They're going to increase that. ISR capability um, through unmanned aerial vehicles and other, other sources also going up to make sure that we meet the needs that are in front of us. Now, there are a lot of other things that aren't going up, 
but that's because things have changed. We need a new strategy to confront the threats that we did. And in a difficult budget environment, you guys did that and put together a very good strategy. So I hope we'll have a realistic conversation. And if more money wants to be spent here, tell us where we should find it. Tell us how to balance that out. Because never forget that it is also in our national security interest to have a strong economy and a fiscally responsible government. And if we don't have those things, the strongest military in the world will not be able to protect us. So this is a very interesting debate that we're going to have over the course of the next several months. Um, I look forward to the comments from the members of this committee and from uh, the Secretary and the General. We have a lot of, uh, of difficult work to do, but I think we're off to a good start. And I look forward to working with everybody on the committee and at the Pentagon to get the job done for the American people. Thank you.